All right, today we're going to talk about the two main forms of energy. The two main forms. So please be following along your chapter 7 guided notes, and here we go. So energy is the ability to do work, and it exists in many different forms. There's a lot of different forms of energy. We're going to talk about a lot of them in this chapter. But the two main forms that we're going to talk about in this video, the two main forms of energy, are number one is kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, you're supposed to write it down and its definition. Kinetic energy is the energy of moving objects. It's the energy of moving objects. In fact, in the, in the margins of your notes, I hope by kinetic energy, let's write this, moving. I know it's part of the definition. But in order for an object to have kinetic energy, it's got to be moving. So if I throw this calculator across the counter, when it's moving, does it have kinetic energy? Yeah. Yeah, it does. So it's energy of a moving object. The second main form of energy is called potential energy. Potential energy is the stored energy that an object may have. So it's stored energy. So in the margins by potential, let's write stored. It's the stored energy. So even though there's many different types of energy, these are the two main types. Kinetic, which is moving energy, and potential, which is stored energy. We're going to learn about them in more detail in the next couple of lessons. Let's start with kinetic energy first. Kinetic energy is, is the energy of a moving object. How would you calculate it? Well, kinetic energy is calculated this way. It's one half the mass of the object times the velocity of the object squared. So always got to remember to square the velocity. So in your books, it asks for the kinetic energy is equal to, I want you to write this down. Kinetic energy is equal to one half the mass times the velocity squared. And so that's why it's, it's the energy of a moving object. It's got to have some velocity here. <coughs> what if it's not moving? What if velocity is zero? What is kinetic energy going to be? Zero, because anything times zero is zero. It's got to have some movement or some velocity here in order to calculate kinetic energy. So I've got a lot of practice problems. Let's go through them. Number eight. It says a golf pro swings his driver, which weighs 0.75 kgs, at a velocity of 60 meters per second. Calculate the kinetic energy of the club. So let's start this problem by writing the formula for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is equal to one half the mass of the object times the velocity of the, of the object squared. Now let's just plug into this equation here and see what it is. So kinetic energy is equal to one half. What was the mass of the club? 0 0.75 kgs. And how fast did he swing? It had a velocity of 60 yeah. meters per second. But what do we got to do to the velocity? Square. Got to square. You okay, know, very important, your units for this. The mass has to be kilograms, and the velocity has to be in meters per second. Okay, let's simplify that. Um, grab a calculator. So 1 half times 0.75 times 60 squared. So kinetic energy of this golf club is going to be 1,350 what? It's an energy. What are my units going to be for energy? Joules, yeah. So that's how much energy that golf club would have. 1,350 joules. Okay, practice problem. Um, oh, let's actually talk about this for a second. So this is a good question here. I kind of wrote over the top of it, but I think we can still read it. It says, what is more important for hitting the ball farther? A heavier club or a faster swing? Now, does mass come into it? Yeah. yeah, but because velocity is squared, 
if you swing faster and, and that's going to be squared, that's going to have a lot larger impact on kinetic energy. So if you are a golfer and you want to hit the ball farther, swing faster. You swing faster, you're going to transfer more of that energy into the ball, which makes it go a lot farther. Okay, practice problem number nine. What is the kinetic energy of the space shuttle? It has a mass of 68,000 kilograms when it's orbiting the Earth at 13,000 meters per second. I want you guys to try this one. Obviously, it's going to have a large value here, a large kinetic energy. Let's see if you guys can get it right. So take a second, hit pause on your video and see if you can get this one first. Okay, let's see how you did with this one. Hopefully you wrote down kinetic energy is equal to one half the mass of the object times the velocity of, of the object squared. Now let's plug in our, our numbers here. We're looking for kinetic energy. It's equal to one half. The mass of the space shuttle, it says, was 68,000 kg, so I don't need to worry about converting units there. And the velocity of the space shuttle when it's orbiting Earth was 13,000 meters per second. But always remember to square the velocity. That's where you guys, most students will do this equation just fine, but they'll forget to square it. So remember that. Did you guys get this? Um, so the kinetic energy, when you put it in your calculator, 5.75 times 10 to the 12th. Yeah. Did you guys get that? How many got it? Okay, what are my units going to be for kinetic energy? Yeah. Joules. Okay. Joules. So obviously, the space shuttle has a lot of energy. It's, it's a very massive object, and its velocity is very fast. So. Okay, practice problem number 10. Again, I would like you guys to try this one. It's a little bit different. It's giving you kinetic energy this time, and it's asking you to figure out how fast the truck is going. So a little bit different, but again, it's use that same equation and see if you guys can solve for it. Okay, so let's read it. It says, how fast is a truck moving if it contains 28,000 joules of kinetic energy and has the mass of 4,000 kgs. I always like to write down the formula for kinetic energy. It's equal to 1 half the mass times the velocity squared. Now as we read it, let's plug in uh, our variables here. Kinetic energy was 28,000 joules. So 28,000 goes in for kinetic energy. Guys, whenever it has a, uh, a, the units of joules, that's got to be an energy value. It's equal to one half. The mass of the truck was 4,000 kgs. And it wants to know how fast the truck is moving. That's its velocity. But you can't forget that velocity is squared. So if I were you, I would simplify this, uh, this equation as much as I can. So this would be 28,000 on this side. And one half of 4,000 is what? 2,000 times v squared. Now to get v squared by itself, what I would do is divide both sides by 2,000. And so what's 28,000 divided by 2,000? 14. 14. So v squared is equal to 14. How would you get rid of that square, guys? You've got a square root both sides. And so the square root of v squared is v, and the square root of 14 is what? 3.74. 3.74. Now, what are my units going to be if this is velocity? Meters per second. Meters per second. Good. So you've got to have the correct units as well. So that truck must have been moving at 3.74 meters per second. That's the thing about cars, when you get in a car and, and you're, you're in that massive of, of an object and you've got a lot of speed, do you have a lot of energy yes. going down the road? You do, and that's, you've got to be very careful because um, you don't want to transfer that energy to, uh, to another object all at the same time, or in a very short amount of time. 
You cause a lot of damage. It's a lot of force going on there. So I remember, be very careful. Okay, number 11. Okay, practice problem number 11. This is the last one for the practice problems concerning kinetic energy. Let's see if you guys can get this one right, and then we'll move on to potential energy. Sound good? So give it a shot. Please hit pause in your video and try and get this one right. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's try this one. It says a, a rolling ball has 55 joules of kinetic energy and is rolling with 20 meters per second. What is the ball's mass? So again, I'm going to write down the equation for kinetic energy. It's one half the mass times the velocity squared. Now let's plug in and see what we're supposed to solve for. It said it had 55 joules of kinetic energy. So that's going to go in for kinetic energy. The mass, did it tell us the mass? No, that's what it wanted us to find. So I'm just going to keep calling it m. And it says it was rolling with 20 meters at 20 meters per second. So the velocity is going to be 20 meters per second, but you got to square it, yeah. So now what I would do is simplify that as much as you can right here. I would take 20 and square it first, which is 400. And then what's half of 400? 200. So really what you get after you simplify this, this side right here is 200 times m. How do you get m by itself? Yeah, divide by 200, both sides. And so it cancels out on the right side. So 55 divided by 200. So the mass of that uh, rolling ball was 0 0.275. What are my units going to be for mass? Kilograms, kgs. How many of you guys got that? Okay, very good. So that's it for kinetic energy. Um, you can use this equation to solve for the actual kinetic energy, but you can also use it to solve for mass of an object or the velocity of an object. So just remember that kinetic energy is the energy of a moving object. It has to be moving. It has to have some velocity. Okay. Let's move on to the other main type of energy, which is called potential energy. So in your notes, I think you're supposed to write something here, but potential energy is energy that is stored. It has the ability to produce work. So an example of this is this ball right here. If it was just sitting there, it's not moving, so it doesn't have kinetic energy but it does have another type of energy called potential energy because it's at some height above the ground. If you pushed it, it would release that potential energy and it would turn that potential energy into kinetic energy. So this would be going from potential energy to kinetic energy. Anything though, guys, any object that is at some height above the ground is going to have potential energy. So if I was to to drop this pen, does this pen right now that I'm holding up, does it have potential energy? Yeah. Yeah, because it has some height. If I drop it, what does it take that potential energy and it turns it into what? Yeah. Kinetic energy. And so it moves and it falls down. And so that's kind of what we're going to be looking at in this, in this lesson. So for potential energy, there's many different types. So let's go through and name them right now. So potential energies can include, number one, is gravitational potential energy. This is the energy caused because the object is at some height. At some height above the ground. And so because of gravity, it's, it has potential energy. It's called gravitational potential energy. Number two is elastic potential energy. This, uh, I think about a rubber band. If you stretch it, but you don't let go, does it have potential energy? Yeah. yeah, and that's because when you change the shape of an object, it can spring back into its original shape. That's called elastic potential energy. Number three is chemical potential energy. There's energy in chemical bonds. 
when you eat food, your metabolism is, and your body is going to break up those those chemical bonds and form new bonds, and it releases energy when that happens. So, chemical potential energy. Batteries have chemical potential energy. Number four is electrostatic potential energy. This is the energy stored because of charged particles. So there's going to be some potential energy here if you were to let these particles go because they have the same charge, they would repel each other. So there's potential energy in charges as well. Number five, nuclear potential energy. In nuclear material, there's a lot of potential energy. So if you had a big chunk of uranium, that's a lot of, of potential energy in that uh, substance there. So, so nuclear potential energy. Number six is thermal potential energy, or potential energy because of heat. A piece of coal um, has a lot of thermal potential energy. If you were to burn it and break those chemical bonds, it would release some of that energy in heat. And so it's thermal potential energy. Number seven is solar. All of our energy on Earth comes from, ultimately comes from the sun. The, the sun has a, a lot of energy, and we can harness that, and it's called solar potential energy. And obviously wind, wind potential energy. We can harvest that um, energy as well. Okay, so let's get into the first one. The first type is called gravitational potential energy. It's sometimes simply called potential energy or PE. Okay, so a lot of people abbreviate it PE. And this is the energy that an object gains as it is lifted to a higher position. So as an object is lifted above the ground, it gains gravitational potential energy. So if you were to look at this roller coaster down here, there's a I've labeled some, some of these positions with letters here. So there's W, there's X, there's Y, and Z. Now what if I asked you guys, at which point on this roller coaster track does it have the most potential energy? At W. How come? That's right, but how come? Yeah, it's, it's at the highest point. And so because of gravity, there's a lot more potential energy here than there would be at the bottom of the hill, right? So that's why on roller coasters, the, the first thing they'll do is they'll take you to the highest point. And then they use that potential energy to transform it into what? Kinetic energy as it moves. So, Okay, so how do you calculate potential energy? You calculate potential energy by taking the object's mass times 9.8, which is the acceleration due to gravity, times the height of the object. This is what I want you guys to remember. Potential energy is equal to mgh. What does the m stand for? Mass. Mass. What is g? Gravity. Acceleration due to gravity, which on Earth is always going to be 9.8. And what is h? Height. The height of the object above the ground. Okay. All right, let's use that equation to answer some questions. Number, practice problem number tw 12. It says, what potential energy is acquired by a hammer with a mass of 0.75 kgs when it's raised 0.35 meters in the air? Let's write it down. Potential energy is equal to mgh. So we want to calculate the potential energy. What's the mass of the hammer? Did it tell us? 0 0.75 and the units have to be in kilograms, so they are. What am I substituting in for G? 9.8. 9.8. It's the acceleration due to gravity on Earth is always 9.8 meters per second squared. What is height here? Yeah, 0 0.35 meters in the air. So all you have to do is times those numbers together, and that tells you how much potential energy that hammer would have. Did you guys get uh, potential energy was equal to 2.57? Yeah. 2.57 what? Joules. 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 So just lifting that hammer up, you're giving it energy. Now, if you were to release it, wouldn't this much energy be released in, and be formed into kinetic energy? 
of the moving hammer. Okay, very good. Practice problem 13. Let's go through this one together. It says a book with a mass of 1 kg is dropped from a height of 3 meters. What is the potential energy of the book when it reaches the floor? Okay, let's write down potential energy is equal to mgh. What was the mass, guys, of the book? It's equal to 1 kg. What's, what's g? 9.8. And what was the height? When it reaches the floor, what's the height? Zero. Zero. So if it doesn't have any height, what's the potential energy going to be? Zero. Yeah. Zero. So an object on the ground has no potential energy. Okay. No gravitational potential energy, anyway. All right, 14. I want you to use that equation. I want you to solve this one on your own, okay? So if you're watching the video, please hit pause, try it. Get an answer and see if you get it right. Okay, let's see how you guys did with this problem. <laughs> Hopefully you started it off by writing the equation for potential energy, which is equal to mgh. Okay, now let's read it. It says, at what height is an object that has a mass of 50 kgs if its gravitational potential energy is 9,800 joules. Whenever you see joules, that's telling you what? Energy. It's energy. So that's the potential energy is 9,800. The mass, it told us, was 50 kg. So I'm going to put that in for the m. What's g? Always 9.8. And we're supposed to solve for the height, so I'm just going to call it h. So let's simplify this equation. So 50 times 9.8 is equal to 490 times h. Now, to get h by itself, what do you need to do with this 490? Divide by 490. Both sides. Cancels out on that side. So 9,800 divided by 490. Did you guys get height to us 20? Yep. Okay, now very important. What are my units for height? Meters. Meters. Okay. That, uh, that object must have been 20 meters above the ground in order to have that much potential energy. Okay, pretty easy. I've got one more, guys. And this is the last practice problem. So again, I would like you to try it on your own. Please try it on your own and see if you can get the answer correct before I explain it. Okay, let's see how you guys did with this one. Hopefully you wrote down that potential energy is equal to m g h. And now let's read it. It says, what is the mass, so we're looking for mass here, of an object if its gravitational potential energy is 3,822 joules, and it is 15 meters above the ground. Okay, again, if it's got joules in it, that's an energy value. So that's our potential energy is 3822 is equal to, now I don't have the mass, so I'm just going to keep calling it m. G, though, is 9.8 meters per second squared, and the height, it said it was 15 meters above the ground. So now we have an equation where, it's, where we have one unknown, which is mass, we can solve for it. What I would do first is simplify what's going on here. So 9.8 times 15. Which is 147. Now, how would I get the m by itself? We've well, got to divide by 147, both sides. Over here it cancels out, so mass is equal to 3,822 divided by 147. So M, did you guys get this? Is 26. Did anyone get that? Yeah. Okay, 26 what? Kg. It's mass, so it's got to be kilograms. Got to be kgs. Okay, very good. Okay, before we quit, let's summarize what we talked about. There's two main types of energies. What are they? 
kinetic and potential. Which one is the energy of moving objects? Kinetic. 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 Which one is stored? Potential. Energy. Potential. What's the equation for finding kinetic energy? So kinetic energy, how do we find it? One half the mass times velocity squared. How do we find kinetic energy? We just named it. MGH. Okay. Potential. Did I say kinetic? Yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry. Potential energy is equal to MGH. Guys, simple equations, simple math, right? Okay, I hope that makes sense. To give you some more practice with it, though, I would like you to open up your student workbooks. There's a couple of worksheets. The first one is titled Kinetic Energy Worksheet. And that goes for a couple of pages. Then I've got one on Potential Energy. So it's called Potential Energy Worksheet. So please go there again. It's Kinetic Energy Worksheet and Potential Energy Worksheet. And let's get those done. And hopefully this made sense.